Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna describe how to perform deep learning-based object detection. And specifically, we'll be using a neural network called single-shot multi-box detection, trained using TensorFlow. And like previous videos, we're gonna be using OpenCV to both read the model and perform inference on some sample test images. If you look at this name here, it says SSD, which stands for single-shot multi-box detection. The single shot refers to the fact that we're going to make a single forward pass through the network to perform inference and yet detect multiple objects within an image. And like other types of networks, SSD models can be trained with different architectural backbones, which essentially means you can model a single concept yet use different backbones depending on your application. So in this case, we're using a mobile net architecture, which is a smaller model intended for mobile devices. But before we get started, I wanted to point out this resource here. There's a TensorFlow Object Detection Model Zoo at this URL. And if you go to that uh, repository, you can download a variety of different object detection models. So we just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to be using the uh, SSD MobileNet V2 Coco 2018 archive listed here. And if you extract that archive, you'll see it has a structure like the one shown here. And we simply wanted to point out that you only need one file from that archive, and that would be the frozen inference graph right here, which is the weights file for the uh, model. And there's actually two other files that we'll need to have in order to run this notebook. So let's uh, scroll down and take a look at those as well. So right here, we're specifying uh, the three models that are required, uh, the frozen inference graph, which we just described above. And then there's a configuration file for the network uh, that's indicated here with the .pb text extension, and then also the uh, class labels for the data set that was used to train this model, which is the COCO 2018 data set. You can actually Google that COCO data set and retrieve this um, class labels file from uh, numerous places on the internet. But in terms of this uh, configuration file, there's actually a script that you can use to generate this file from the frozen inference graph. And that script is uh, indicated right here uh, we've already executed this notebook, and so we have uh, all these files locally on our system, but we just wanted to review with you how to obtain uh, each of these three files. And then one thing that's worth pointing out uh, at this point is uh, take a look at the uh, class labels uh, for this file that we printed out down here in the uh, lower portion of the screen. Um, notice the difference between a deep learning object detector and a traditional computer vision object detector. We used to have a detector for every class. So, for example, we had a face detector and a person detector and so on. And those were all separate models. But with deep learning models, we have enormous capacity to learn. So a single model can detect multiple objects over a wide range of aspect angles and scales, which is the real beauty of deep learning. So let's scroll down here a little bit further to the next section of the notebook. So summarized here are the three steps that need to be performed. Uh, first, loading both the model and the input image into memory, and then uh, detecting objects using a forward pass through the network. And then finally, displaying the detected objects with bounding boxes and class labels. And so the first step is uh, indicated here where we're calling the OpenCV function readNet from TensorFlow. And that takes as input a model file and the configuration file, both of which we specified above. And then that's going to return for us an instance of the network here, which we'll use further below to perform inference. Uh, next here, we're defining a convenience function called detect objects, and it takes as input the uh, network instance and then the test image. And then uh, we've seen this before here. There's another OpenCV uh, function called blob from image, and this uh, takes as input the test image and then several other arguments that are related to pre-processing uh, the test image. I recall that when we prepare an image for inference, we need to perform any pre-processing on that file that was performed on the training set. And so this function contains several arguments related to the required pre-processing. This first argument here is a scale factor, and it's set to 1, uh, which indicates that the training set didn't have any special scaling performed on it. Uh, then here we're indicating the size of the training images, uh, and we're indicating that uh, right here with a 300. So the test image will need to be uh, reshaped according to this size. And then the next argument is this mean value. Uh, if the training images had um, had a mean subtracted value applied to them, then this would have been some other vector. But since um, those images don't require any mean subtraction, we're simply indicating zeros here. And this next argument here, uh, swap RB for whether or not we want to swap the red and the blue channels. And then in this case, we do want to do that since the training images used a different convention than what's used by OpenCV. And then finally, this crop flag is set to false, so that means that the images uh, are simply going to be resized as opposed to cropping them to the right size. 
And then this function returns for us a blob representation of that image that's been pre-processed. So there's a pre-processing step, and then there's also a format conversion step, if you will. And then this blob representation of the image is passed to the set input uh, method to prepare the image for uh, inference. And then finally, we perform inference on the uh, test image by calling the forward method, and that returns for us some number of objects that have been detected, and then we'll return that from this function. So there's a couple more convenience functions uh, down here below, so let's take a look at those. Uh, this one here, display text, takes in the uh, test image frame and then a text string and some coordinates. So this is a function that will simply annotate a bounding box with the class label by drawing a black rectangle here and then uh, annotating the frame with some text indicating the uh, class label inside the black rectangle. And then finally, there's this uh, display objects uh, function. And then it also takes in the test image and then a list of objects that were detected and then the threshold for detection here. And uh, here we're retrieving the shape of the input test image. And then we're going to loop over all the objects that were detected by the network and retrieve their class IDs and their scores. And in this next section here, we're further going to retrieve the uh, coordinates for the bounding box of that object and convert those coordinates to the original test image coordinates. And then finally, if the score uh, for this object is greater than our input threshold, then we'll go ahead and annotate the frame with the uh, class label, uh, calling that display text function we just described above. And then finally, we're going to render the test image frame with the bounding box rectangle in white right here. So let's take a look at some results. So you can see here we're reading in a test image. And now we're going to uh, use the function we created above, detect objects, passing at the network instance here, and the image we just read in here. And the return from that function is a list of objects that have been detected. And then we're going to call the display objects function, passing in the test image and the array of objects. And you can see the result down here. There's all kinds of objects being detected. There's a person here. There's a bicycle here. There's a car here. There's cars off in the distance, and even way out in the distance here, you can see a traffic light's been detected. So this is a very robust uh, object detection algorithm, has uh, about 80 classes. And uh, let's take a look at another example uh, down here below. This is a sports scene. So you can see uh, the same sequence here, reading in the image, calling detect objects, and then display objects. And in this case, we're getting uh, both people in the image, the bat, uh, the baseball glove, which is really nice, and then uh, baseball. But notice that the baseball actually has a false uh, positive. There's only one baseball there, yet the um, detection algorithm is uh, reporting two, so there's a false positive there. But uh, other than that, it's done a very nice job. And uh, let's, let's take a look at one more example. So here's another sports scene here, and you can see it's detecting the soccer player here, the soccer ball here, and then there's a false positive here. It thinks that the tip of his shoe is actually another sports ball. And uh, one thing we can do in cases like this is after you've uh, established uh, some number of false positives, you can actually take these image examples and perform what's called hard negative mining by training the network with additional examples like this uh, to reduce the number of false positives. So we hope that's a nice introduction for you to object detection. And that's all we wanted to cover in this video. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.